Thank you very much, and it's always a pleasure being at Biostock. And actually, we have accomplished quite a lot of things since we last were here in the spring. Uh, for example, we have completed our talk studies, and we have also performed a market access showing that we have an asset with a billion dollar or billion euro drug asset, actually. But maybe I should start from the beginning for those of you who haven't followed us that closely. So RCD Pharma, in brief, we are a small company and we were established last year and were at the same time listed on the Spotlight stock market. We have a longer history, though, of being a research project from the Lund University. The company, we have some projects and also a lot of or several patents, but we are focusing right now on our drug candidate, RCD405, uh, which is a patent-protected substance with a unique and dual mode of action, having actually both anti-inflammatory properties as well as airway-relaxing properties, and aimed for the treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. And COPD is an inflammatory disease, and it's a progressive disease. And it's uh, characterized by a lot of disabling symptoms, but also by exacerbations. And exacerbations are worsening of the symptoms. And they lead and they cause, over time, a progression of the disease and a reduction in the quality of life. And in the end, these patients also usually need hospitalizations, and once they have been in hospital, it's quite often that they need to be readmitted within a relatively uh, short time frame again. And this vicious cycle with uh, exacerbations and reduction in lung function and so on is eventually lethal. And then by having a possibility to reduce these exacerbations, uh, you would also have an impact on the disease itself. And the mortality I mentioned, it's actually COPD is uh, the third leading cause of death globally, with more than three million people dying of this disease every year. In addition, it is an indication with a high unmet medical need. And the treatments that are available, they primarily target the symptoms, but not the underlying disease itself. The drug sources that are available, are many of them are associated with side effects, and some also lose effect over time, so-called receptor desensitization. So there is really an urgent need for new and innovative treatments that can actually target the underlying disease itself, so that you can stop or at least uh, diminish the progression of the disease. So having an an effect on the underlying disease and preventing this exacerbation would not only benefit the patients, but also the enormous costs that are associated with the management of COPD. Because as you can see in this graph here, the green part of each bar here in the different countries actually represents the hospitalizations costs. So the main part of the costs for treating and managing these patients are related to hospitalizations. And as, as I said, the cause of the hospitalizations is often the exacerbations that are linked to the underlying inflammation. So preventing exacerbations and limiting the disease to a more early, mild disease stage, which actually then have an influence not only on the costs, but also on the patient's lives. And here we see RCD405, our drug asset and our drug candidate. It possesses a unique and dual mode of action outside of the established pharmacological pathways. It has this dual effect with both an airway relaxing effect and an anti-inflammatory effect. So there is a big potential that we can slow the course of the progression of the disease, and thereby, of course, influencing and improving the quality of lives for these patients and also prolonging their survival. And with these characteristics and these properties that we have seen, we have actually performed a market analysis together with experts in the field and also made a sales forecast. 
And here I will present two of the different scenarios that is the outcome of this analysis. One more conservative and one more optimistic one. Of course, <coughs> taking the underlying prevalent cases into account, those that are then being treated and actually also would have this disease characteristics of mild to moderate disease and also then being in the end eligible for such a potential treatment. And the first scenario and the first case being the more conservative one that is that, that we take into account a market share more similar to a standard of care drug. While the second one, the more optimistic, is then having a market share similar to a first-in-class drug. And we have, first, of course, also looked at other drugs and looked at their pricing and benchmarked the price and costs uh, in that area. So the outcome of this is that in the first scenario, the more conservative one, there we assume with that patient share and market uh, penetration, which is up to at a maximum 5%, we reach actually a billion euro or a billion dollar market here at the peak sales, at where it peaks after five years after launch. And with the second more optimistic scenario where we have a market, assumed market share of up to 40%, there we reach even higher uh, sales uh, figures. So this is a, uh, a great potential, of course, for the market. And there is a huge global market out there already. So this was looking a little bit more into the future, focusing again on where we are right now. And as I said in the beginning, we have completed a lot, and lately we have completed the TOX studies and the TOX prog program, and we are now awaiting the draft reports within shortly. We, had all, we have also further refined our formulation together with Econovo, and we have concluded that we now actually have the possibility to dose both very low doses and also very relatively high doses. And that is important in the first clinical trials, where you need to have a possibility to dose, to start very low, but also be able to increase the dosing and the dose interval. And as I said, we have performed market access analysis, and we have also now completed most of our studies that are using different disease models. And actually, we are, have just submitted a manuscript together with um, our collaborators here in Lund University and at uh, Karolinska. And we have submitted that manuscript to one of the journals in the respiratory research field. And we also have additional studies in progress and are initiating mechanistic studies to look further into the pharmacology. Together with pulmonology experts, we are also now starting to look at the more uh, detailed design of the early clinical trials and also all overall of, on the entire clinical development program. So we know where we are going and also have a better idea of that. And that we are doing together with some clinical experts and pulmonology experts. And of course, I want to thank you, uh, those of you who might have participated in our rights issue which was recently completed and where we actually raised uh, 9.2 million Swedish crowns. So that was very good. And also last but not least, we have a new CFO, which will focus on the investor relations and the financial planning going forward. In summary, as you have seen, COPD, that it's a disease and an indication with a high unmet medical need. And in addition, there is a large market that is, has the possibility to grow even further. And there we have our unique and patent protected drug candidate RCD405, which has this dual mechanism of action with anti-inflammatory as well as airway relaxing properties. So with that, I want to conclude my presentation, and I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you, Mia. You mentioned here research collaborations <laughs> with Lund University, for example, and you're, as far as I understand, you're trying to gain a better understanding of the, um, the mechanism of action. Could you tell us a little bit more about what it is you're trying to find out in this collaboration? 
Yes, um, <coughs> we are looking, of course, uh, I mean, there are several different pathways. It's a quite complex disease where, I mean, the in only the inflammatory pathways are quite complex. So it's a uh, little bit more understanding which pathways and which uh, yeah, molecules and so on that are involved in getting the clear effects that we see. I mean, we, we know that what effects that we have and that we have these effects is more understanding, more molecular mechanism behind it. Uh, yeah. And what is the benefit of having a dual mode drug compared to combining drugs? I mean, of course, you get <laughs> two in one, which is, of course, good. Now, many patients, they, I mean, they get a dual combination. I mean, and then you have uh, a fixed dose. Uh, and what is the advantage here is that we have this anti-inflammatory effect as well in combination because it's, it's especially the anti-inflammatory part where we lack the effect because the inhaled corticosteroids are really not that effective uh, in this patient population, as it is, for example, in asthma. We have a question about the route of administration. Uh, if it's oral or is it inhalation, just it, to clarify. It's an inhalation, and that's what we are doing with Iconova, then exactly. uh, looking at formulations and inhalers and uh, dosing and so on. Could you tell us a bit more about where you are in the work with Iconova? Yes, we have. I mean, we are doing reiterations to be able to dose. I mean, as I said, in the early clinical trials, we need to be able to start low from a safety perspective. So you need to have a formulation that could handle that and that you get the amount out that you wish to at, at a sufficiently low dose, but also then to get it as high as you want to so that you can reach the therapeutic dose. And uh, that's uh, yeah, looking at refinements, I would say, and different options, how you can handle that as uh, good as possible, I would say. What's the timeline like in that project? Uh, for the formulation? Yeah. I mean, we are more or less, we are concluding on, on that. Uh, so it's, I mean, we have a good formulation right now that we could continue with, actually. We also have a question about the, your target markets. Um, someone w wondering if Asia is not a, a particularly interesting region where there's high pollution and smoking, which contributes to, I would then assume, what is a high incidence of COPD. Definitely. This wasn't a part of this analysis, but we, yeah, we had <laughs> to focus and we, we couldn't take, uh, I mean, the analysis would have been more extensive and uh, have cost more money actually <laughs> to do that but I mean US is a big market but of course Asia and all these countries are definitely so that would add on to those th this analysis of course. Speaking of money you mentioned the the rights issue here where you raised just over nine million Swedish krona. could you just elaborate a little bit on what this means for the ongoing development? Yes yeah this was actually then 72 percent of the entire what of what we had asked for so to say uh, so we can do a lot of what we had planned, of course, since it wasn't 100%. We, n we can still do a lot, but we need maybe to postpone some of these activities a little bit. And then we have a warrant in uh, January that is planned. Uh, so that we have hope that we can, based on that progress, the other activities. And you recently recruited a new CFO. Are you looking at further extending the team or this is it for now? If yeah, eventually, of course, yeah. we need further <laughs> competencies as well. But this is it for now, yeah. yes. Right. Well, thank you so much, Mia, for your yeah. presentation and the thank answers. You.